Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are going to have a special video because we are actually here at my parents house and I thought it would be fun to do a spring garden tour of my mama's garden. She has just the most magnificent garden that she spends a lot of time in and I just thought that it would be a really fun thing for you to see because she has a completely different garden um, setting, house setting than what we have at our house. We built our house in the middle of a field so we have lots and lots of hot sun. She lives underneath these huge magnificent pine trees. Um, they moved here in the late 70s so this is a well-established garden that is in all of its spring glory and I just thought you might find it fun and interesting to walk through it with me. Now my mama Mimi as we affectionately call her was like Jenny I'm not gonna be on camera. I'm gonna get her on camera one of these days but today's not the day. So we're, you're just going to have to bear with me because we did a quick tour and she did tell me now this came from this person and this came from this person so I will try my best to get it all correct but come this summer I'm going to get her on camera so she can give you all of the scoop. So as you can see behind me she has got just tons of beautiful azaleas here on her property and she told me she said Jenny I have not bought one of these azaleas. All of these azaleas have come from friends family, neighbors that she, you know, either they gave her or she took little cuttings from, so forth and so on. This is really about the sunniest spot in her garden because this house sits underneath these gorgeous trees, so she deals a lot with dry shade. Here we have, um, and she, there's like not, there's not one milk really that's kind of empty. So, I'm just going to kind of go through and give you just kind of the general overview. These hydrangeas right here are um, Proven Winners Tough Stuff hydrangeas. They have done really well for her. She gets enough sun but also enough shade that they do great. They had a little bit of the damage from that freeze that we had once they started popping out but they will give her, of course, gorgeous blooms this fall, not fall, this summer. Um, here between these great little mounds of lime green, this is a Euchara, this is Lemon Love Euchara. It's one that we have in the nursery. It is a great one. It is part of that Velosa species and just grows really well here in our hot summer nights because that's the key for us with Euchara's is a lot of them don't survive our, um, the heat and humidity of our nights. Now, is this not the most magnificent patch of Creeping Jenny you have ever seen? So because she has so much dry um, shade, she has totally given up on grass and does a lot of ground covers and so forth. So this is Creeping Jenny that she put in here. It's going well. What Jerry is showing you right now is Brunaria. That is Jack Frost Brunaria. Of course, we love Brunaria because it is just that great shade perennial. It is in all of his glory right now with those beautiful blue flowers. Remember, Brunaria is wonderful because it is a perennial. It is more deer resistant, rabbit resistant. And then you get those beautiful blue blooms in the early spring. And then the rest of the season, you get that great silvery foliage. But she has hyacinths in here that have just spread naturally. These came from my daddy's mama. So Grandmama Wendy, um, she got these hyacinths from her, and look, they're just, they're go, they just go everywhere. So there's another Jack Frost. Um, there are, like I said, Brunaria is everywhere. She does do a little bit, um, these really sweet little garden tags. So my mama finds the best little garden art. Um, don't ask me where she finds all these things because she travels to all different garden centers and nurseries all over the place and finds these. So she has a way of tagging some of her plants. Now, what Jerry is showing you right now is a pulmonaria that we offered at a nursery a couple of years ago. This is shrimps on the Barbie pulmonaria. A lot of you are familiar and going after the spot on pulmonaria right now from Proven Winners. Well, she has got three gorgeous clumps of the shrimps on the barbie shrimps on the barbie of course has those beautiful pink blooms on it great foliage and then she just has them alternating between some hostas 
Now mama has tons and tons of hostas in here. Some of them I know what they are, and but a lot of them I don't. So again, with these garden tours, I want you to be inspired. Maybe not necessarily what exactly that plant is, but just kind of the feel of her garden. This section is really where her ferns go and naturalize. They're just coming up by, in about a month. This whole area will be completely filled with ferns and different really kind of moisture loving um, perennials. I do want to show you too. She was so funny. She's like, now Jenny, now you tell them that I didn't plant these ferns over here. So right here at their steps or their back porch, she has these ferns growing. Here she's got some, looks like Japanese painted fern down by the step. And then possibly, um, I don't know. Oh shoot, I forgot what the name of this fern is. Huh? Cinnamon fern. No, this is not the cinnamon fern. This is, I don't know, I can't remember what it is. And then look under here. Look under the step. There's a jack in the pulpit. How fun is that? So these plants will just naturalize by themselves um, and just spread. So that is a very classic um, woodland perennial and we've got more of them. So I will show you over here. Then of course she has lots of hostas in pots. She was dealing with some mole vole issues. I think it has gotten better, but look at this Jack in the pulpit. So Jack in the pulpit right here has, look at all of those in there. Can you see that? Isn't that just fantastic? I love it. It's huge and it's massive. And my mama, she is that classic Southern gardener in that if you're like, oh, Mimi, what is that? I really like it. She goes, well, I'll give you a clump. And so she just, she just gives us stuff all over the time, all over the time. It's fantastic. So of course, now this is the cinnamon fern. So she's got cinnamon ferns coming through here. This is the cinnamon fern because it is reminiscent of a cinnamon stick. So again, there's tons of ferns in here. She's got a bleeding heart in here that has a beautiful little purple bloom on it. This was stars and stripes cast iron plant that has another jack in the pulpit down right below it. Um, just tons of beautiful things. And then I love this sweet little trillium that she has right here. Let's see if we can get in on that. Look at that. So trilliums, again, another classic perennial They'll just spread naturally. Wonderful, beautiful white with a little bit of purple on the end. Just beautiful. I love it. So we have those. Then she has, of course, her holly ferns. Um, they are just taken off. But look at this. Like her garden just keeps going. So you have all of these beautiful azaleas. She's got another clump of brunaria. She's like, I don't know what that is. I think it's Diane's gold, but it's not gold. They just spread, but look at these. These came from, and mama forgive me if I get all this messed up. This came from cuttings from a neighbor when they first got married back, gosh, early seventies. There was, she was like two doors down and mama would take cuttings from her azaleas with permission, of course. So the, all the red ones come from Mrs. Williams, I believe it is. Um, and then, yeah, just tons. So as we go through, she's got a still bees everywhere, more holly ferns, bleeding hearts, the Japanese painted ferns that she has through here. And mama also has the Lenten roses. And so these are kind of what we would call like the old timey Lenten roses. These are the ones that will spread naturally. They drop their seeds, they, the wind takes them, the birds take them. So she has tons of Lenten roses all throughout her garden. Um, and then of course the variegated Solomon seal that she gave me clumps of it. Love this. It is beautiful. It does those beautiful little bell shaped flowers in this time of year. So this is mid April. So they are in all their glory. They spread through little rhizomes, really kind of on the top of the ground, not too deep in there. Um, but this, hedge of azaleas. <sighs> For those of you in, I've, I've had a couple of people in Michigan and different places saying, well, we're going to get snow. Snow's coming. You know, everything looks so green and so lush. So this is, I'm, I'm sending you some springtime. So if you're still in the cold months of winter and it's just, ugh, 
hang on, spring is coming, but look at this. This is the hedge when our babies were little that we would throw a blanket down and this is where we would have our photo shoots. So this is the classic, just, oh my gosh, Southern Azalea. These came from Mrs. Ferris, who was a sweet member of our church growing up. So she took cuttings from her, hence, and the bumblebees are just all in here. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if these would be, would be George Tabor. There's some Formosas in here. It's just, you know, and they've been here for 40 something years. So they have, of course, just in all of their glory, I know my daddy at times would have to whack them back completely, but these are just the beautiful azaleas that are just iconic with the South. But let's keep going because there's more. So Mama has throughout um, her garden a lot of the Lyman Whitaker um, sculptures. These are like the wind, wind catchers. And so it's just a little bit of wind and it will catch it and spin. Um, she was, I have one of these at the nursery near the trial gardens. She's the one that introduced me to these. Lyman Whitaker is an artist who is in Arizona, but we have an art gallery in Asheville that sells them. So over many years, Mama has collected quite a few of them and has them throughout her garden. You can see that they have just a natural age to them, just really pretty. And then Mama has a great eye for doing just sort of fun, funky things. So these are simply old, trunks of trees that I'm going to guess came from our family land down in South Carolina. So you know that we do the bottle benders wind chimes with the heart pine um, knots, the pine knots. And so these I'm going to, I'm pretty sure came from that um, because there's one that still has the char on it, but she just uses it. She's done it upright. She's positioned it so, so that it will stay there. Um, and so created, you know, an artistic little area right here more cast iron plants in, in containers, hostas, eucharis. She has a little Japanese maple. Again, because also her ground is just, in these areas, is really hard and compact. So she does a lot of things in pots and containers. So there we go, we have that. And then back here behind us, she has um, just tons. She's got oak leaf hydrangeas, um, some mop head hydrangeas, ferns, she has some beautiful um, wind chimes back there that daddy made her kind of an arbor to hang all of them from, but it just keeps going. Here we go. We're gonna go into the next room down here. And it's so peaceful. It is just, just such a nice, quiet space that you can just come and hang out. They did this great um, porch a couple of years ago that they can just come and sit, but again, this is a huge mass of azaleas behind us here. This was a fun story that she was telling me. Um, they moved into this house, built this house, moved into this house in the late 70s. And it was just, I mean, it had been woods. And my grandmother, Grandmama Betty, her mama, obviously. So Grandmama Betty and Aunt Nina went down to Louisiana to visit some family. And Grandmama knew that Mama needed, you know, she needed plants. She needed a landscape per yard. So evidently, she found this really great deal on one gallon azaleas, and she completely filled up the trunk of her car with all of these one gallon azaleas and brought them back from Louisiana and gave them to Mama. Um, my grandmother was a child of the Depression, so she loved a good deal. She loved a good bargain. So whenever she found all those great azaleas on sale, she just gobbled them up. So that's why, like Mama said, there's a little bit of a hodgepodge of azaleas in here because that's what Grandmama, she didn't know what she was buying and it was a great deal and so she just got them. Um, but again, I mean, Mama just repeats, you know, the, the same, um, kind of a lot of the same species, different varieties of these shade loving plants in here. Again, now we have Milky Way cast iron plant. We have different kinds of, um, Linton roses. I believe she got these from us at the garden center a couple of years ago. So these are more of the hybrid. I want to say it's, is it peppermint? It's something like that. Um, and then down in there, there's like a, a, a deep purple black one. Um, she has all sorts of fun things. The dogwoods are blooming. So these are just the great, um, these dogwoods are probably older than I am that are here and beautiful. Again, so here's one of her 
bottle bender wind chimes coming down through here lots of autumn ferns more eucharas painted ferns um, and then look at this massive look at this look at this oak leaf hydrangea look how tall it is so i'm five two five three on a good day and this thing is just a beautiful massive beast it already has buds on it i remember when she planted this gosh i don't know was i in high school maybe but see um so here are some of the flower buds that are to come and be open and just beautiful. The great thing about oak leaf hydrangeas is that you want to plant them where they can grow to their full potential because if you leave them alone and you leave them in one spot, then they can get huge and massive. They really don't like to be pruned. They really like to be kind of planted and forget it, forget it, <laughs> forgotten so that they can grow. Um, and then of course, they're called an oak leaf hydrangea because their leaves look just like an oak leaf. And then down here below, she again, the more Linton roses. Look at this beautiful hosta in her pot. Um, just fantastic. And then over here, she has this great kind of arbor pergola that my daddy built her. Um, and it is covered in, this is Confederate jasmine. I'll have to come back maybe in about a week or two when it is going to be in full bloom. Right now it has all the buds that are covering it, but Confederate Jasmine is obviously a great vine. There's only two plants. She only had it planted on two corners, two posts of this gazebo, and it has just taken off like crazy. Um, I remember that Daddy was building this in the late summer, fall of 2009. And that's when we found out we were pregnant with Jackson and he was building this and we came out here and told him that we were having baby number three. <laughs> I'll never forget that. So there's actually a wind vein on the very top of this, but the, um, the jasmine has completely taken it over and you cannot see it. So it has covered it. It is gorgeous. When it blooms, it is just a glorious sight and it smells absolutely amazing. So also, like I said, there's a little, whoop, there was a little bee in there. So there's a little bee home right there. I kind of scared him. He, he flew away. Um, we'll kind of meander through here. This is what I want to come show you this summer because these beds really kind of come alive in the summertime because we're getting to the edge of the woods where she gets more light and things really start to pop out. These are some great native ferns. Again, I don't remember what they're called. I didn't ask her on this time. Um, but these ferns are fun because they come up straight on a stalk and then they have these beautiful kind of a canopy of a frond. They go everywhere. So these are one of those things that she would dig up and basically just, if she couldn't give them away, she would just toss because they do spread. Clearly they love this area where they just grow and grow um, and do magnificently well. Again, she got, this was probably off of the piece of farm equipment, like an auger. And then she put a little birdhouse on top of it. So cute, very cute, very creative. And then she's got another beautiful oak leaf hydrangea. And then this is her Savannah urn from Unique Stone that she got with us in this last order. So there's a beautiful Unique Stone here with a um, Autumn Frost Hosta painted fern. And then I'm not sure what the other Hosta is in there, but I love, that's one thing we love about Unique Stone. So you can put a brand new container in a well-established garden, but it looks like it's been there for years. It's just amazing. So of course those hostas and those ferns will continue to fill in, get nice and big, and eventually will just kind of cover the whole top of the urn. But you've got just this beautiful um, planter here that looks like it should have been here the entire time. Here's another little um, sign that she had done. This is really fun. So this is a leopard lily. 
she finds some of the most unique things. So we have surrounded by Lenten roses, but here is a leopard lily. I think we can all understand why it's called a leopard lily. Just beautiful spots on it. And she planted that in June of 2014. So there you go. So mama also keeps a gardening journal, but when you have a garden this size, it is nice to have those little plant tags that you can put on there and say, you know, what it is, when you planted it, so forth and so on. Um, I do want to show you back over here real quick. Native azaleas. So now mama did buy these. Um, so when she says she didn't buy azaleas, she did these, not the traditional azaleas. So these are native azaleas. I do not know the varieties, but native azaleas are different because they are deciduous. They will lose their leaves, but they do just such a beautiful, unique um, flower on them. Very different than what we think of a, um, I guess, what, what are the azaleas are Asian? Their origin? Um, so these are native ones. So there is this kind of this kind of uh, apricot color. Then this one was a pink one. It has finished blooming, but you can see there was a little bit of a pink and a white. So then here we have another native azalea that has that great, it's close to a Clemson orange bloom on it. Just a beautiful, nice cluster. Just gorgeous. Absolutely stunning flower on that. Nice big clusters. Completely different than the traditional azaleas, but equally as beautiful in their own right. Um, really fun, and I like how she's kind of put all of them in this area here together. And then, like I said, we were working our way to more of the sun. So like she was able to put this beautiful baptiza right here. This is actually Carolina Moonlight baptiza, which is gonna be a beautiful yellow. Of course, it still is just kind of coming up. Has a little bit of blooms, but of course, baptiza will bloom up the stalk and just be, um, just a great spring bloomer. They, traditionally, they do like that full sun. So like I said, we're moving our way that way to some more sun. Um, but I love this angle of the shot because you can see how big and massive those azaleas are behind me. It's not just a little skinny row. They're just really huge and wide and just, oh, they're exquisite. There's a whole nother section behind me, or actually behind Jerry, that gets, that is considered her sun garden. And we were definitely gonna come back later on in the summer and get that. But let's, Jerry, I'm gonna spin around. If you work that way, I'll work this way. Um, because I want you to know, you can see where we are um, in relation to our house and the nursery. The entrance to the nursery in our house is just right over my shoulder. So if you folks are coming to visit um, the nursery, now Mama's Garden obviously is not open to the public, but feel free when you're leaving the nursery to drive nice and slow. Don't get out. And just drive as you're driving by, just kind of take it in because I love how her garden truly does have the four seasons of interest. So no matter when you come, you will see something um, from a distance that just kind of catches your eye because especially then when the uh, hydrangeas are blooming and all of her, her sun border right here is blooming, it is just a gorgeous, magnificent sight. Again, she has some more of the Lyman Whitaker um, wind sculptures right there. It just, it just keeps on going, but we will be back here. I am gonna get her on camera, I tell you. So mom, if you're watching, just get ready for your big debut because everybody's gonna love Mimi just as much as we do. She is just a wealth of knowledge and every plant, like if, if she were to do this tour with us, this tour would probably be like four hours long because she would tell you, well, this plant came from here and this plant came from here and I got this here. Like she knows the history of every single plant. Um, in, we have a massive plane going overhead, excuse us, there's a jet um, kind of disrupting all the quiet, spring feel right here but anyway i hope you have enjoyed this tour um, just as much as i have again there is much more to see we will definitely be back here again in this space so that you can see it again and as always thank you so much for gardening with creekside we'll see you in the next video bye friends